And we are back for another edition of Behind the Uniform and fitting that the first guy that we had on Behind the Uniform is the last guy we have on before the spring game. Talking about Will Johnson coming off of a stellar freshman year when he sat in his seat uh, last year it was all about the prospects, what he thought he could do, what he thought he might do, what he was confident would happen, but hadn't happened yet. Now it's in the books, like I said, stellar freshman campaign to reflect upon that and to look ahead to kind of tell me what he's kind of seen from the sideline. It's William Johnson. Will, how you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you for having me back. Hey, man, thanks for being back. I feel like a lot of the things that you told us when you sat down here uh, last year from what you were going to do to what you saw from some of the other guys, those things really came true. But we got to have a chance now to really kind of sit and get into the, the details, mm. if you will, and kind of talk about how you were playing so well at an All-American level at the end of the season, but the journey to that point. What was the most difficult part of your transition, you would say? I think um, at the beginning of the season, just having to be patient, because having those older guys in front of me, just knowing Coach Clink had my best interest in hand, and just um, yeah, being patient, knowing that when my time was right, I was going to be able to be out there. So that's really all it was first half of the season I had to be real patient and um, just keep working every day in practice and with a little time I was getting in games just take that experience and just every week get better. You know they there's this term that we use called swimming right there's a point where every freshman I mean every freshman comes in swimming to some extent there's a point where you feel like all right I'm out the water now like I everything is slowed down I, I know what to do where to be you remember what that point was for you? Mm, I'd say probably around like Michigan State game, but I think Rutgers game was definitely a big confidence boost because I got a whole game of um, underneath my belt and just that experience, get my first interception and just feel like I had a really good game that game. So that took, that took my confidence really high for the rest of the season. So I think at that point I knew I could play with anybody the rest of the season. So the, take me into the prep for the Michigan State game because, you know, you got emotions mm. as an in-state guy heading into that yeah. game. And, then, you know, obviously I think receiver was the most talented part of their team, right? Mm. They got some guys yeah. over there. So what was that week of prep like? And did you feel like you would be playing a bigger role in that game? Yeah, the week of prep was, like you said, just focusing on those receivers because we knew that was the way they were going to try to attack us. But I don't think I knew I was going to play a lot that game. It just – happened the way it went. I happened to be in a lot that, that second half. So, I mean, I think I was prepared for it, but I didn't really know how much I would play. One of the things that I tell people about you is you're a student of the game. Like, it's not just the physical talent. Like, you you grind, you study film like a pro. Mm. How did you learn that? Mm, I think Coach Klink was on me a lot this, this year, just coming in, getting extra film work with him and being in defensive meetings with the coaching staff and just learn how they think about the defense and what, they, what they're seeing in the uh, opposing team's offense. So I think just really learning what the, the way the coaches think and what, the way they want us to be, what, what position they want us to be in, really just puts you ahead when you're out, out, on, out there on game days when you know what they're calling and what they want you to do and what the offense is giving you. So when you know the way the coaches are thinking, it definitely helps you out a lot on the field. Yeah, it also helps being, you know, the son of a college football player and the mm -hmm. son of a DB at that, right? right? So you're looking at it from a thousand foot view already kind of mm -hmm. seeing the big picture. Uh, but I, I think a, another big part of a guy having the kind of maturation process you did is your, your connection, your vibe with your coach. Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, Charles Woodson getting in as he got, I think it was maybe two, two games into his freshman year. He might have started his second game anyway. His, his relationship, I've heard Vance Bedford talk about it. I've heard other guys talk about his vibe with Vance was a real big thing. So what about your relationship with Clink, man? I know it goes back to before Michigan, right. but it's different once he's, like, once he's your actual coach, yeah. right? So what has that been like? Oh, it's, been, it's been great. I mean, we've had our ups and downs, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> throughout the season. Um, right. I mean, yeah, it got to a point where we were kind of in a little rough patch, but not, nothing crazy. <laughs> but. I mean, he's definitely hard on you. He tells you what, to, what you need to hear, and he's always going to get the best out of you. So I think he's the perfect coach for me, definitely having what my dad gave me my whole life growing up. So um, he's always has my best interest in hand. And so when I go out there and he doesn't think I'm ready or something like that, he always makes sure he has my best interest. So, I mean, I know he's never going to put me in a vulnerable situation, so I always trust him with everything. 
you had to have experience with that though with your dad being a player yeah. i mean do you remember some more visible times where your, your dad is coaching you like he's dad but he's also coaching you yeah can you remember sometimes it's like man like i imagine you know jet and juan go through that like man come on man. <laughs> but he's yeah. also your coach so yeah. how do you as the as the on the receiving <laughs> end of that i always ask the coaches how you handle it but as the son how did you how do you separate the fact that he's trying to make you better from the fact that he's almost he's also dad too i think he did a, a better job than me with it because we'll be working out and i'll be real mad in the summer it's hot he's getting real he's getting on me a lot and we'll we'll get mad during the workout then after he's super nice being in dad <laughs> mode and it's like he, it's you just, can set it off yeah it's like he, he finds a way to balance both so i think that helps me because Obviously, it's harder for me because I'm the one he's on. So right. as long as he knows how to balance it, I think it helps me a lot. Well, I remember during the recruiting process, though, that was one of the you were like, Clink is on me, mm. like my dad. So, I mean, you you almost have to process it that way. Like when you're on the field, it's got to be Coach Clink. When right. you're in the mm. meeting room, it's got to be Coach Clink. So have you, have you done that easier now, kind of separating the fact that he's got to coach you hard? But, hey, at the end of the day, you know, away from the football field, you guys are family. Yeah, I'm I'm real used to it now. I don't really take anything to anything personal really. So I just know after this season I definitely know that he's gonna be hard on me. He's gonna be hard on everybody, even the seniors. So mm -hmm. I mean he's gonna be hard on me the whole time I'm here and I just embrace it really right now. So you come in, you know him better than your your classmates that you came in with, some of the other mm -hmm. DBs, right? I mean, have you he's hard on everyone, but you kinda know, you expect it. What about them? Have you had to kinda talk to them and be like, hey man, he he's like that with everybody. It's yeah. It's good. I mean, I think guys like Amarion, he was, he was with Coach Bellamy. He's a different kind of coach. He was with him all last year. So, you know, he got to get used to it. But I think we're all, everybody goes through that little phase where they got to get used to him, really. I mean, I, I didn't really have a, because he didn't coach me before I got here. So I didn't mm -hmm. really know how hard it was going to be on me. But, I mean, once you go through a couple months with him, you'll be fine. All right. So you get in the Rutgers game. Did you know you were going to be playing a lot mm -hmm. in that game? Yeah, I knew I would start because Jamon was out. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I knew I would start. All right, so you go into that game and, man, just getting that first interception. Was mm -hmm. that, did it feel like pressure was, did, did you feel pressure up to that point because of that? Like to get the interception? To get the interception, to get it, like to get your hands on the ball, to get yeah, an interception. Yeah, definitely. I definitely, feel, I didn't feel pressure, but I wanted it bad. So, I mean, like I said, when I first got the interception, it felt like high school again, just running the ball and, being in that moment it felt like high school again because I always had the ball in my hand. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think I felt pressure beforehand. It was just, especially now that I was starting and I had a full game, it was like, it was, I felt like it was meant to be and it happened. So. All right. So, but the, the biggest challenge of the season uh, to me has to be the you being on the field, Marvin Harrison, man. Mm -hmm. So that week of prep, what was that like for you? Yeah, that week was definitely different. It was, I was probably the most locked in I've ever been for a football game that week. I mean, every day I was in there with Coach Klink and Coach Mentor and the defensive guys and just studying him. I mean, I knew, pretty much knew what he was going to do a lot of the time, so that helped me a lot, um, even with his releases and all those type of things. So just studying definitely put me at, a, at an advantage that game, and just the mentality I had that game definitely helped me out a lot. Is he a guy, does he talk a lot? No, nah, I don't really think he said a word. Okay, game, so yeah. that's that's unique for a receiver and for an Ohio State receiver at that, yeah. right? If he wasn't talking, did you hear a lot of chirping? Because this is your first Michigan Ohio State experience. Yeah. I mean, you had heard a lot about it. Did it, you know, everything you heard? Did, was it what you expected, or was it did it surpass expectations? I think it was what I expected. I don't think it was a lot, at least on the outside with the receivers and corners. At least on my side, I don't think receivers were talking much. Um, but I think just the atmosphere and be before the game, you know, they walked out with their fancy clothes on, <laughs> staring at us and doing all that type of stuff. So, I mean, they did all the extra things before the game. But at the end of the day, after the game, we were the ones celebrating on their field and stuff. So I think the atmosphere of the crowd and it was all red. It wasn't a lot of Michigan people there like it was here last year. So mm -hmm. the atmosphere was definitely what I expected it to be. But I don't think it was crazy chirping going on or anything like that. Yeah, it felt like in that game, you know, they run up and down the field on everyone I'm talking about on the outside they run by every guy mm -hmm. and I wonder was there was there a point because it felt like some of those plays man you know CJ Stroud had a bunch of time in the pocket and couldn't find guys and mm -hmm. and you guys did a good job I think maybe confusing them yeah 
I don't know. I mean, what was it like? You know better than me being on the field. We know we gave him different looks, and um, our game plan was really, really good going into that game. So I think it definitely confu confused him a little bit, and we were at an advantage for sure. Yeah, so that's a great segue into what the best game of year. I mean, Ohio State, from uh, who you were covering standpoint, mm -hmm. I felt like was outstanding game. Statistically, the best game of your career mm -hmm. was the Big Ten Championship game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you talk about being locked in for the game. So I, I want you to talk me through, talk the viewers through what you saw on both interceptions. Because to me, it didn't just seem like you just saw something while you were on the field. This seemed like the product of a lot of prep, a lot mm -hmm. of study, and a lot of knowing what they were going to do using that knowledge to your benefit on the field and jumping some play. So take me through the interceptions one by one. Well, the first interception, um, I just knew I was in man coverage and uh, I knew I didn't really have any help. So I played outside leverage to kind of force him back inside so he didn't have a lot of room to catch the ball. And I knew he was obviously their best receiver, so they were going to try to attack me when I was out there on the island with him. So I just knew it was probably coming. And when I was in position, just looked up, the ball was coming, and honestly, when I went up to catch it, like it was kind of a blur, like I didn't even see it. And I just grabbed it on my chest, and then after that, I was just celebrating. But the second one, that was that was a lot of film prep. Like we knew when they lined up in that formation um, that they were giving a slant. That's why I jumped it like that. Like I didn't even look at the receiver; I just jumped it, and the, the ball was coming. So that was definitely all film prep. That second one. Yeah, man, that's that's that that grown up, mm. that grown up approach, that grown up mentality that you were bringing to the table, uh, which is a good point to kind of get over and talking about NIL, right? Uh, because that was one of the things that we focused on when you were in here before. I know you had sat down, you had met with, with Dave Hemmick from Morgan Stanley, and you were in the early stages of kind of setting up how you were gonna manage, you know, your, your, your growing empire, right? So. Mm -hmm. What have you learned over the over the past year that you or what did you learn from Dave that you've applied over the past year mm -hmm. and how how comfortable you, do you feel now with uh, with NIL going on? Um, I feel real comfortable with it. I mean, one thing I learned that is it's, it's a lot, especially with going on with football and school. Got to be able to manage it all. But um, I'm definitely really appreciative, appreciative of it all. So um, I think I've just learned to learn how to balance everything and um, with all the things I'm getting. Just like I said with, with Dave, mm -hmm. just learning different ways to uh, where to put my money and um, how to save it, things like that. So it's definitely been a good learning experience for me. Have you, because you're you're doing things right, mm -hmm. you got things going. You're you're meeting with financial planners on, you know, hey, I need to set this aside for taxes. I need to put this. I think you were talking about a Roth IRA the last mm -hmm. time, right? Do you send your teammates? Are they, do they ever lean on you like, hey, Will, what are you doing with this and how are you doing that with your money? Is that any of that go on with you or anyone on the team? Yeah, I mean, a little bit. It's not like we don't really talk much about how much we're making or how much we are investing. But um, I mean, maybe my close friends on the team mm -hmm. might talk about what am I doing? Like, who do I know? Who am I working with? Things like that. But we don't really talk much about different ways we're investing and things like mm -hmm. that right now. Because, you know, everybody's just getting started. So mm -hmm. the more money we get, obviously, the different conversations we have, but not right, not that much right now. From a, the Michigan perspective, uh, do you sense there's a lot more going on? Mm -hmm. First, as far as NIL education is concerned, yeah. and then when it comes to deals, do you, uh, do you see anything going on with regard to them positioning you guys to get more deals? Yeah, I think as far as education, they're, they're trying hard right now. They got a lot of people that they're hiring in the program to learn more about taxes and um, uh, like the contracts, different people to help with their contracts. So Michigan's, the football department's trying to um, get people to help us to grow, grow our knowledge on everything. But um, I think with as far as getting deals too, Valiant and um, different people outside of the university are come pouring into Michigan more as far as NIL too. So mm -hmm. it's growing. Mm -hmm. The more we're here, the more things go on and the more our team goes uphill the more of that's going uphill too, so. Okay, so, you know, you're an entrepreneur. When you're an NIL guy, you're an entrepreneur, so you got, a, you got a brand. First, let's start with the story of the turnover buffs. What's the, what's the genesis of that? How did that come about? Well, that came about, so my mom, my lawyer, Mike Stein, and uh, one of my close friends, and Mike's close friends, Dino, he's actually a uh, jeweler, he makes a lot of the buffs. So they came up with the idea, and they brought it to me, and I really liked it, so. I brought it to the team and they really liked it. And um, Dino was able to give me a pair of buffs. 
And then um, after that, I think the first game we did it was Michigan State. No, might have been. No, Maryland. Maryland was the first game. And um, after that, it got a lot of media buzz and just took off. So <laughs> we knew we, we had a good feeling it was going to take off. So once it got on the big screen and it was on the TV, it took off pretty well. So, what, so what's the process of, of taking it to the team? Do you show your teammates or do you go ask Coach Harbaugh, hey, this is what I want to do and see what he thinks? How did that go? Well, it went like, um, so I texted the DBs first in the group chat, see what they thought about it. They loved it. And then uh, we had our defensive team meeting. We brought it up to Coach Manor. He didn't even know a buff word, but <laughs> he was like, yeah, sounds cool. I'm, I'm, I'm down for it. So Harbaugh didn't really know what it was either. They just went along with it. And the team, team liked it, so they had, they, they had fun with it too. Yeah, I see Chris Bryant. Chris Bryant is out front with it, but mm. has, has, has Harbaugh had his hands on him? Has he put him on? Has he done anything no, with the buff? I don't think he knows too much about it, to be honest, but. <laughs> He's all for it. Though. All right, so, but so it's it's obviously a team thing on the field. You get a turnover, you mm. get the bus, but it also is your line, right? Mm. So tell me about the turnover buffs line and everything that people can get, you know, from as far as your apparel is concerned. Yeah, so right now we're uh, all of the turnover buffs hoodies, and now we have turnover buff glasses too. They're, they're going to be sold in the M Den. Um, it's going to be started next week, so the people want to get it for the spring game or get it early for the season. It's uh, They're fully stocked right now. So um, this this next couple of weeks, if you want to go get that turnover buff merch, get ready for the season, and that's where it'll be. So it'll be at the MDM for the spring game? Mm -hmm. So all the MDM locations at the stadium that day? Yeah, I think it will be the one on campus too, that main one on campus. And the main one on campus. So um, starting like next week, I don't know on the exact day of the spring game, if that's the first day, but I know next week, sometime next week, it'll be there, so. So you got turnover buffs, hoodies. Give me everything that you got as far as the turnover buff. Turnover buff line. hoodies. There should be turnover buff t-shirts and then turnover buff glasses that we just came out with. So okay. it'll probably be about 70 pairs of those. So the sooner you get them, the sooner you can get them. So, All right. Yeah. All right, and so then for those who aren't coming and, and can't mm -hmm. get over to the MDN, do you have a website? Yeah, it should be on the MDN website. If you just search my name on there, you'll have the all the turnover buff stuff, any other merch that I have on there, you'll be able to get that too. Okay, so MDN.com is the way. All right, so Will, why don't you show the shirt to the camera so people can see the hoodie? Yeah, here's the shirt. And then also for all the fans that want to put on the turnover bus with us, you can buy the glasses too. That's right, that's, mm -hmm. yeah, at the game. Throw them on with us at the same time after the turnover, so. That'll okay. get the fans very involved too. That's gonna be a thing. That's mm -hmm. gonna be a thing that I think fans do. That'll be really, really cool, man. So, um, get back to the season, playoff game, mm -hmm. and I remember looking out there, and I'm like, "Where's Will?" Yeah. Right? I'm like, like especially when you see a dude run. I was like, "He, that's not where's Will?" Right. And I see you on the sideline. Yeah. So was that when that was that when you got hurt? Well, yeah. I, that's when I hurt my toe actually. I heard it in the first drive, so it was real frustrating. But I mean, after a couple of drives in, I tried to feel it out how it was, and I just played the rest of the game on it. But I couldn't really go go full speed, so it was real frustrating throughout the whole game. After having those good couple of games before, mm -hmm. hoping to have a star impact game that game too. I feel like I would have had a bigger impact if I was healthy, but right. um, yeah, it was it was a little frustrating. But yeah, that's how it went. Yeah, it was definitely there a range of. Of, of things that happened. Of course, your injury was a big part of it from a defensive perspective. Um, it was just a mistake-laden game, mm -hmm. not any and not any one spot. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, all over the team where collectively you guys made more mistakes. I felt like in that game than you did in several put together. Yeah. Have you had time to sort of process mm -hmm. the what you think led to that or why you think that was, or talk to your other? Your teammates about, hey man, like, you know, we that's not us. Yeah. I'm not saying this is these are my words, mm -hmm. but we are a better team than that, than them. I yeah. mean, yeah. so have you talked about what what happened and why it happened? So if you're ever in that situation again, it won't happen again. Yeah, we talked about it. I mean, we we definitely beat ourselves. We all know that that we beat ourselves and we gave them 21 point head start at, on the game, and it was an offense and defense, a lot of mistakes, but. I think we went into the game kind of like super locked in and that's just like our team is more of a have fun with it and just play loose type of team. And I'm not sure if that was the reason mm -hmm. that that happened, but I think it might have been part of it that we were just so focused and we kind of changed the way we prepared for the game and so you can be so you can too be much. too locked in for a yeah, game. Yeah, I feel like we were a little too focused and it was it kind of felt a little different going into the game like it was too we were too tight going into the game, so but 
when you see at the start of the game what happened. So yeah, yeah. So you know, an intense focus coming off of that on getting back. Not that like that you're too locked in to to piggyback on what you just said, but hey. We know what it takes to get there. Mm -hmm. Now twice, we're gonna get back. And then guys come back. Now there's some injuries to deal with uh, here in the, uh, in the winter slash spring. You got several guys out, uh, you know, offense and defense. Normally that would be a concern. Like mm -hmm. I, I know who's out injury wise, right? And I know how many guys are out injury wise. And if fans were like, they'd be like, they would be freaking out. Mm -hmm. That's not going on inside, it's almost like, we good. Yeah. <laughs> that's, at least that's how it, it seems yeah. to me. Mm -hmm. I mean, we know how many guys we have out right now. We're just trying to get healthy for the fall. We're not trying to win a national championship in the spring. So we're obviously doing what we can to get better every day and still working really hard. But I mean, trying to be healthy for the fall. We know we got guys in the spring right now that are working hard that can help us in the fall. That are getting an opportunity that they might not have got if we all weren't um, dealing with something. So. I think we're not really worried about, we know we got a lot of depth this year. So mm -hmm. that's one thing that we're really looking forward to going into the next season. We didn't have much last year. So I don't think we're too worried about it right now. So what's your day to day like, you know, as a guy who obviously is rehabbing mm -hmm. right now, what's your outside of rehab? And I guess we can go into what your rehab is like, but what's your, you know, your practice day like while they're practicing on the field? What are you doing? What's that like? Coach Herb's killing us in the weight room. So we're definitely getting a lot stronger in any way we can. Obviously, we got limitations, all of us, but we're, we're still working real hard. Coach Herb's getting us right on um, the whole practice. So mm -hmm. it might be three hour practice where we're lifting for three hours, two hours. So we're still getting a lot of work in. I felt like last year, you know, it wasn't just the talent that you guys had. I felt like last year as a secondary, there were just fewer busts. Mm -hmm. That's not to uh, demean or disparage the guy, their defense before that. I just think you have more experience in the scheme. Mm -hmm. And then you coming in as a guy who was a student of the game, just fit right in. And then Mikey coming over right. as a guy that's like that. It just felt like you guys were thinking the game, kind of mm -hmm. like you said, like, yeah. like coaches. Could you get that vibe on the field? Too? Yeah, definitely. We definitely uh, play, play well together. And we disguise a lot of things, show different looks, and our coaches always have us really prepared. We got really smart coaches. I think we got some of the best defensive coaches in the country. Coach Mentor's very smart. Even guys like Coach Mallory, people don't know much about. Coach Jay, he's really smart. Coach Clink, we got a good good group of uh, defensive coaches. So we just added Coach Partridge. He's mm -hmm. super smart, super energetic. Uh, it's definitely a different level of coaching that we added to our defense that would, I think would take us to another level too. So. Um, I think our defensive coaches have us very prepared, so we play well together. And, and so now I want to take the opportunity to let you talk about some of your teammates, and let's start with Mikey because, mm -hmm. I mean, you talk to different guys like Amaria. He obviously leans. He's like, will the course? I'm gonna ask mm -hmm. questions, but he was like, Mikey is like a coach. Like right. as much as he watches film, as mm -hmm. much as he kind of sees things that we don't see. Right. All right, can you pick up on that I mean, too? Mikey's just an ex like he's the example that you want to look at. I mean. He does everything the right way, so on and off the field. So he's always doing extra, always in the right spot, always going hard in practice. He's always got a really high motor. So when you when you turn on the film, he's always doing the right thing and always going really hard. So he's somebody that you look at to learn more about and um, get advice from. Yeah, man, and you were the one, you were probably the first one in the program to say Amarion Walker's a freak. Mm -hmm. You were on this, it's like, hey, he go turn the combine out yeah, right now, right? right? Now he was first in all the drills, so yeah. <laughs> right, and so proven to be true. Were you a part of the process of telling him to come over and play defense? Definitely, I think the offense hates me because I was the one <laughs> saying he gotta come, so. Um, like JJ, Coast, and all of them give me hard, hard time because I, I was the one pushing them to come really hard, but um, yeah, I mean, I see the freakiness he does have and the attributes he has, he can, once he really gets, learns the game and really gets the technique down and it starts to click for him, uh, he will he can be really good, so. Yeah, and talking to him, and people by the time they see this will have seen that episode, you know, he obviously is really confident dude, mm -hmm. but it's, it's not like he doesn't get beat. Like he, yeah. he obviously, especially now mm -hmm. as it's new, but from what I could gather, what it sounded like to me is when he gets beat is because Hey, you know, you're, you're still learning the defense. Yeah. Guys aren't just going to run by. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Mari, right? That, at least that's how I take it. Is that how you see it too? Yeah, I feel like it's just being comfortable. That's how it was for me last year too. Just I wasn't really comfortable. A lot going on in my head. Like your confidence when you get beat, you got a lot going on because you got beat in front of your teammates and you just came over, you're trying to prove everything. So he's got a lot of things mentally and technique is the biggest thing. He's so athletic, he kind of relies on it sometimes a little too much. So once he can really lock in on the technique this off season and feel comfortable just playing DB and not just being athletic, he'll be where we need him to be. Mm -hmm. I know the entire defense, you're seeing flashes. Mm -hmm. I, I get that. But kind of like you said with Amarion, when you, you saw something exceptional, you're like, okay, that stands out. As you watch these guys this spring or even going back to winter conditioning, maybe you combine the two. What, what's kind of flashing to you right now? It's like, man, that really stands out. Mm -hmm. Um, or who? I think guys like Ernest, our linebacker, he's he's really good on offense. Um, we got some good young guys, like Samaj is pretty good, Fred, um, Cole, all those guys. Are, I don't know how much they'll play this year, but they're all really good. Yeah, guys. man, that's, that, that's a great jump off because I've heard a lot about Fred Moore's speed. Like that's yeah. what Trevor Keegan came in. He was like, man, he, this dude he is fast. top off, yeah. Well, the, the, it's crazy because knock on him in high school, coming out of high school, was that slow. he was slow. Yeah. But you haven't seen that. No, nah, definitely not. He's, he's one of our best route runners on the team, too, right now. So I think he can. He might make an impact this year, definitely. Um, I didn't know much about him, too, coming in. He shocked me when he came in, too. So uh, I think those, those young guys are proving what they can do, but they still got a lot to learn and things right. like that. But they're proving. Samaj in the slot, I mean, you, you know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm physical, great hands, going to run routes, you're going to hear about it, mm -hmm. right? At least that's how it was in high school. Does, mm -hmm. Has he quieted down a little bit in spring, or do you still hear him? Uh, hear him a little bit. He, he definitely quieted down. I mean, you got to on you the got type to. of pro yeah. team we got, the culture we got. So, <laughs> um, But I'm sure once he gets back in that role, he'll be talking a lot, too, and make, make some plays underneath his belt. He'll be back into that role. Yeah, early impressions of some of the young guys uh, in the secondary who – enroll early mm. like you and they're going through the spring for the first time swimming but maybe they flash some um I, cam calhoun i thought and eh, he was a really talented guy i thought watching watching in high school i don't do the rankings mm -hmm. uh, i think our guys who do the rankings do a great job but i thought they had underranked jair hill mm -hmm. i thought he was better than the ranking said i'm curious your impressions of those young guys here early mm -hmm. on yeah cam has a very very uh, outgoing personality and he's definitely a person that looks to be the best he can all the time so he's got a lot a lot to work on too but he's flashing and then um jair he's just very instinctual very athletic he's kind of like a marion just super raw mm -hmm. but like once they get the technique down i mean like jair he plays really hard and i think once he gets the technique down and once marion get the technique down they can could, they could help us next year. So mm -hmm. the, I'm trying to remember the, the starters across the board that Harbaugh said. He said, so you on one side, Mariano on the other side. St clearly still competition to go. Mm -hmm. um, Mikey at nickel, of course. Mm -hmm. and then you gotta, I mean, it feels like you guys are interchangeable at, at safety. Yeah. Obviously, Makari can play. RJ's played a lot of football. We started to see Quentin Johnson in there. Of course, Rob Moore. Mm -hmm. You guys seem super, That it feels like you might be the most deep at, at safety. Yeah. Is that the right impression? Yeah, we are really deep. And I think we, we just added a guy in 2023, his name. Yeah, Brandon, Brandon Hillman. Hillman. So they say he's really good too. So, I mean, we're really deep at safety. Linebacker, we got a lot of depth this year. D-line, really our whole defense is pretty much back besides a few guys, obviously. But, I mean, I think we got a chance at being, because like I said, dudes like Mason, we lost Mozzie, obviously. Mm -hmm. We got Mason, uh, Chris Jenkins, K Kenneth Grant. Like we got a we got a lot of dudes that are really talented. So. Yeah. So, but you you obviously you lose Big Mike. You obviously talk about Mozzie. We just watched. <laughs> we went out and watched DJ run mm -hmm. a four two six. You think you think a Marion could get that by combine time? By combine time. So uh, he, he'll be in that range. He'll for be sure. in that range. Four two six is so fast. <laughs> you don't know. If, Did y'all know that that he yeah. was that fast? I mean, last year we ran like we were doing our max velocity speeds and DJ beat. Marion, uh, all our Andrea, all our fastest dude, but like he separated from him. So that's when we knew it was like, okay, <laughs> DJ's flying. So yeah, I, I always knew. Even if you really watch film, anytime somebody's running like a fade and he's in good position, they're never getting on top of him. It's yeah, just, man, it's it's funny that you say that because I watch film with Vance Bedford all the time, and he was like, 
man, this dude gives free releases. I said, Vance, he's supposed to be fast. Yeah. I'd be like, really fast. Yeah. And he said, well, hey, man, he's going to be in the track meet all the time. Yeah. Clearly, we see why. Like, this yeah. dude can run on the track. Right. So, I mean, he uses, he knows how fast he is, so he uses that in his game. But, I mean, you know, it's his pros and cons to it, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, you you get you definitely get your hands on guys. Yeah. <laughs> on guys. I like to do that more for sure. Right, for sure, man. So, uh, where you were coming off, and this is where I was going with that question. Defense was really good last year. Mm. Where can you guys be better this year? I think just playing together more, like as far as like our linebackers and DBs, just playing on the, being on the same page more, um, and just we're we're really focused on running to the ball, forcing turnovers. Things that we, we were good at, but we weren't great at last year. Forcing turnovers, forced fumbles, uh, running to the ball, effort plays, things like that. So just focusing on the little things, the details of things that we know we were great, but we got a, a gap we got to close to beat teams like Georgia and all those teams. So we're just trying to add, add little things to our, our game, and I think we can do the things we, we set out to do. What, if anything, do you notice different about J.J. kind of watching him this spring? One thing I noticed off the rip, he looks bigger. Yeah, he definitely put some weight on. I mean, he's still strong, fast, still slinging the ball. Um, I think biggest thing about J.J. this offseason is just the fact that he has spring ball this year. Mm. The connection he's getting with those tight ends, receivers, like I think he's going to be pretty scary this year, just the, the things I've been seeing out there and the throws he's been making and the, the trust that he has now. Because if you think about it, he didn't even throw a ball until fall camp last year. Right. And that's why at the end of the season you see he started clicking because he was just getting in the rhythm. So he's – went straight into this spring ball and this offseason, I think it'll be really good for him. Right, so look, you guys all, it's all family, y'all on the same team, mm -hmm. right? So, but I, I gotta ask, cause the offensive guys act like, man, just killing these dudes. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just killing these dudes. Mm -hmm. So do you, is it really, if you had to handicap practice so far, mm -hmm. noting that guys are out, like you, mm -hmm. but would you say offense is sort of winning the spring so far? I mean, I'm not out there much because I'm working out. Right. But no, nah, I don't. I mean, obviously it goes back and forth. There'll there'll be days where offense can't even barely complete a pass, and there'll be days when um, they're just tearing us up. So it goes back and forth definitely. But um, Coach Harbaugh definitely gives them the benefit of the doubt sometimes, so they have a little bit better practice. But yeah. I doubt that. I've heard for you. That's not yeah. just this spring. Mm -hmm. I hear. I've heard that since Jim has been here. Oh yeah, he favors the offense. Yeah, no, no question. <laughs> From but, guy who gets thrown out of practice, everything yeah, he favors yeah, the offense. Definitely does. But it's only for the better. <laughs> right. Right. Hey, it makes you better as a defense, right? Because mm -hmm. those, those refs might be doing the same thing out right. there. So uh, let's finish with you talking about your your rehab. Where are you? Like, you know. So what's the timeline as far as your rehab is concerned? Um, I mean, I'll be back soon this summer. I'm just taking it slow. Um, I don't think it's any rush for me right now. I just want to be back because this is something I've been dealing with for a while and finally got it handled, handled it. So, I mean, I feel like I'll come back even healthier than I was all last season. So, um, I'm in no rush to rush it back. Just be back as soon as I can for this fall and be as healthy as I can. All right. And tell the folks one more time about the Turnover Buffs merch, everything that's available, what they can get, and where they can get it. So the Turnover Buffs merch will be in the M-Den uh, starting next week. It'll be ready for the spring game. There'll be hoodies, uh, T-shirts, and also Turnover Buff glasses. So you can go buy that. And uh, also on the M-Den website, you can look up my name, and it'll be all the Will Johnson merch and uh, Will Johnson Turnover Buff stuff. So if you want any of that, go check out the M-Den. And so then when there's a turnover and we see you guys fighting the see camera. See throwing them on, you can throw them on with us. So. Yeah, so now, then the, not only would they have to pan to y'all, they have to pan to the crowd too. Right, pan to <laughs> the whole stadium in the glasses, yeah. Yeah, so the whole stadium need to get turnover buffs there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Will will like that. He'll like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> will, thanks a lot for your time, man. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck this coming season. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right, now to do it for this edition of Behind the Uniform. Of course, if you missed any episode, you can also always check it out over on the YouTube page. Again, like the video, subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get a notification every time we put up a new one. If you're listening to this on podcast, again, like the podcast. Be sure to tell all your friends about it. They can find it wherever they get their podcasts, Google, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, you name it. And, of course, where we do everything, where it all goes down, is the MichiganInsider.com. One dollar gets you in your first month. Once you become a full-paying subscriber, and, of course, you have access to all the 24-7 sports sites uh, to begin with, but when you become a full paying member, you also get Paramount Plus 
as part of that subscription. You cannot beat the great deal. Until next time, thanks for watching another edition of Behind the Uniform.